Hey YouTube, this is Kayak DIY, and right now you're looking at the finished Castaway 100. So I've already done several updates or several upgrades on this kayak. Uh, here is a look at what it looked like stock. And then right now you're looking at it customized. So we put in a clear hatch in the front here. We have another clear hatch in the back. Uh, we have outriggers that come off the side that provide a lot of stability. And then you might be noticing this little bit of wiring here. And what that does is it actually provides the power to our lighting system which I'll be showing you later on in this video. And without further ado, let's get it out on the water. These guys love feeding on the barnacles next to the signs and the pier. Open Gangnam Style! Gangnam Style! For this build you're going to need IP68 5050 RGB LEDs. You'll need the Bluetooth controller and here is a diagram of that Bluetooth controller and how it works. Here is a Y splitter. It allows us to power two strips of LEDs from one power source and this is the extension cable for RGB. This is a PG7 cable gland. We use it for a lot of waterproofing where we want to pass a cable through the hull. And here is a look at the kayak. It's a little bit dirty, but it's being used. So we have the LEDs inside the little bit of a ridge seam that Pelican kayaks have. And that's really perfect because if we were to bump up against a dock or a seawall, we know that our LEDs are going to be protected and our hard work didn't go, you know, down the drain. So pretty, uh, pretty nice setup there. Um, might look a little bit crude here in the back, but it, it actually is very unnoticeable. Um, we have a white uh, marine silicone that's just covering the Y splitter portion. So that Y splitter cable is there and it's connecting the two strips on each side. And the LEDs themselves are held in place by E6000 marine adhesive. It's pretty tough stuff. They don't seem to be going anywhere. This is the top side of that area. And you have the Y splitter um, cable coming out of the handle area, and it connects into the RGB extension cable. And at that connection point, I put some uh, liquid uh, electrical tape over the connection just to seal it up. And then that extension cable, I had to cut the, the one end off so I could pass it through the cable gland and also expose the wires. Because on the inside of the hull where that extension cable is, those wires are going to be exposed so you can see all the different colors and then we're going to actually take those exposed wires 
and put them into the Bluetooth modulator. So that Bluetooth uh, module uh, has areas for each color that are in that cable. And so you just need to stick those into the input areas and snug them down using their little flathead screwdriver that comes with the, the kit. And basically, once you get your power source, like your little 12 volt battery, um, connected up to the, the Bluetooth module, you're ready to go. Um, the, the LED lighting will connect up to your phone. All you have to do is go into your Bluetooth settings on your phone and you, uh, you turn your Bluetooth on and then you open up their app and you connect to the Bluetooth device and you can change the colors and do whatever you want. And that's pretty much it. Here's the diagram just for reference. Okay, so let's get started on the hatch install. So the hatch that we're going to be installing looks like this. That's This is the one that we chose. You guys can choose all different kinds. They make several that actually come with bags inside for you to be able to store your gear. Uh, we decided to try a different one and there, there's all sorts of different ones on the market. The measurement here, we measured from the ring here and it said that it was eight inches. So we knew that whatever uh, particular hatch that we chose had to have an outside to outside measurement of eight inches so that it would fit inside that ring area. Now the hole that we're going to cut out is going to be a bit smaller. It's only going to be this diameter, not the outside. So we need to measure this. This measured out to be six and a half inches. By co coincidence, the lid right here also is six and a half inches. So we can flip this upside down, line it up with the little indentation that Pelican has for us. We can line it up there and we can get a pen and we can trace around it. And that's the area that we're gonna cut out then. Okay, so now we're going to take our shop back and we're going to end up cleaning up the area that we cut out. So it's just easier to do it at this step. But before we do that, I'm going to take a knife and thank goodness to one of my sponsors, Bill Blade. Uh, they sent this cap to me. It's pretty cool. It has a knife built right into the blade of the cap. And so I'll just clean up the edges on this, these cuts. Okay, now that we're done vacuuming out the kayak um, after doing the cuts, then we can proceed with the actual install of the hatch. Now something to keep in mind, this is just a practice that I like to do. Anytime I cut a big chunk out of a kayak, I keep this because it's always nice because if you do end up replacing a mount or if you uh, ever you know ever were to get a big gouge in the kayak this this is great material to patch up the kayak with because it comes directly from the kayak so you know it's a material match so keep that in mind anytime you're gonna you know cut into your kayak keep the spare scraps Okay, so now we can install the hatch. Uh, we have the hole cut out, we vacuumed out the hole, and now we just have to pre-drill out some of these holes. I'm gonna drill out my holes with a drill bit that is smaller than the screws I'm using. So I'm using number eight M4 pan head screw fasteners. And then I'm going to apply in my screws. 
And I like to apply them by hand, that way I don't under tighten or over tighten. Because if I do, I can strip out the holes and, they don't, and then it won't hold the hatch in tight. So building the outriggers was actually pretty easy. I used one inch PVC pipe and I first started off with the vertical pieces that are coming out of these black mounts that were already on the kayak. So what I did is I built the vertical pieces, basically cutting them to a length that was over the top of this sidewall. I then added T-fittings to each of them. And then I had to basically create a bend in one inch PVC pipe in order to make it work for connecting the two because as you see here, the angle upward. So I first ended up measuring that distance between there and I tried to measure it with a little bit of an arc in mind. You have a little bit of leeway when you're working with PVC pipe um, because quite a bit of the pipe can fit in those fittings there in between. Uh, so I cut it a little bit long though and I ended up putting the pipe in one fitting. I then took my heat gun and I heated up the pipe and I had gloves on and I bent that pipe down into the other fitting right here. And that's what created that little bit of a bend that you see there. I then ended up cutting some arms to be able to go towards the floats. So each one of these arms is around 16 inches I believe if I remember right and then I ended up having a 45 degree one inch fitting which goes down to a reducer fitting so this goes from one inch to a reducer fitting which converts it down to one half inch and then inside this fitting and inside this fitting is a one half inch pipe to be able to connect the two and then I secured it all with stainless steel screws. Uh, then from the T-fitting, we have a one half inch pipe going that way and one going the other direction through the floats. And then we got caps on the end to secure it. And that's basically it. So the Pelican Castaway 100 is probably one of my most used kayaks due to it being effortless to be able to transport and maneuver. Uh, right now I'm heading over to Sanibel. I'm going to fish under some of the bridges. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share.